In the inky waters of the Atlantic, 200 feet below is a jumble of tangled metal. Deep within the murky depths, shapes slowly emerge. And you start to get a sense of what's going on here. There's a propeller, there's a hull, there's a mass of rusty metal. This is the grave of a sunken ship. Other shapes make little sense on a boat. There appear to be guns, tracks, turrets. As you look more closely, it becomes clear that these are tanks, but there's no explanation why tanks which should be on land are on the seabed. What's even more surprising is that these aren't British tanks, but American Sherman tanks. Dozens of them. It almost looks as though they're ready to go into battle. The whole seabed area around there is actually a nautical graveyard. There are ocean liners, there are submarines. It's as if there's something specific about this area which makes it lethal for shipping. What happened to this ship? Why is it carrying American tanks? And how did it end up at the bottom of the ocean? The answer lies in a forgotten military campaign of the Second World War, the Battle of the Atlantic. During World War II, as an island, Great Britain was fundamentally dependent on its allies for supplies. The main supply line came across the Atlantic from the United States and Canada. In fact, it wasn't just a supply line, it was a lifeline. The Atlantic Passage is the most important way in which Britain got its materials to defend itself during the war. Hitler knew that one of the easiest ways to hit the United Kingdom hard was to cut off that all-important supply route. So Hitler made it a priority to sink all merchant shipping going across the Atlantic. If he could strangle Britain and cut her off from her allies, he could force her out of the war. But what connection did that have to a sunken ship at the bottom of the ocean laden with American tanks? This is the wreck of the SS Empire heritage. She started life as a whaler and was damaged by a mine and put out of service in 1941. But that wasn't the end of her. The SS Empire Heritage was by no means the cream of the merchant fleet, but all boats were needed, so it was patched up and put into service between Liverpool and New York. Each time it made the crossing to and from Liverpool, it would have to pass Malin Head, one of the most dangerous parts of the crossing, according to Jeff Miller, who has often dived the wreck. Yeah, Malin Head can be a very treacherous stretch of water. There's very strong tides, and we're open to the full force of the Atlantic Ocean. The next stop off Malin Head is America, which is thousands of miles away, so we've all that rough energy coming in from the ocean. Just waves, constant seas and storms. The SS Empire Heritage was part of a massive convoy of almost 100 ships that left New York in August 1944. It was heading towards Liverpool with a heavy cargo of war supplies, including 16,000 tonnes of oil and almost 2,000 tonnes of deck cargo, which included Sherman tanks. To counter the threat of the German U-boats, the Royal Navy came up with a system of convoys, and the idea was that up to 30 or 70 merchant ships would sail under protective guard of Royal Navy vessels. It was almost three months after D-Day, and the Allies were well on their way to turning the tide of the war. But there was still a desperate need for supplies. 
Although beachheads had been established in Normandy, what was now required was intense effort to push all the way through France and down into Germany. And to do that, a lot of equipment was necessary. The Allies cannot ship war materials, troops, and supplies effectively to major continental ports. It's months after D-Day that they have large, capable ports operating under Allied control. Until virtually the end of 1944, Britain is still the great essential logistics base. It took several days for the SS Empire heritage to reach the north coast of Ireland. She was on the home straight. Although not complacent, there was a definite feeling that the battle in the Atlantic was over. In effect, it had calmed down from 1943. And with the success of D-Day, there was a sense that shipping in the Atlantic was freer than formerly it had been. She was just 19 miles from Malin Head when disaster struck. A German U-boat lurking in the inky blackness, just waiting for a convoy to pass. U-boats are one of Hitler's deadliest weapons, and this one was fitted with the very latest technology. It had a snorkel, so it could stay submerged for much longer. It hardly needed to surface, so it was very hard to spot. It was also armed with the very latest torpedoes, acoustic torpedoes, which could hone in on the sound of a propeller. Two of these torpedoes smashed into the SS Empire heritage. Two torpedoes might not sink a battleship, which is heavily armored. Merchant ships aren't armored. It's going to sink. This is a case where this particular vessel got very, very unlucky. The Empire Heritage was carrying 16,000 tons of petrol. So when the torpedo struck that, you can imagine the fireball that would have caused, and the sea would have been in flames. I mean, diving in the oil filled water, just in flames, and it must have been horrendous, it must have been a horrible death. I think it was approximately 70,000 merchant seamen lost their lives in World War II. Just unimaginable horror. When the SS Empire Heritage went down, over 100 of the sailors on board died. And many, of course, were very young, even in their teens. This was a sinking with a very real human cost. The SS Empire and her cargo lay silently beneath the waves until 1995, when she was rediscovered by divers. It's a underwater monument to the valor of tens of thousands of merchant seamen in World War II who made victory possible. Victory would not have been possible without all of those ships bringing the supplies, bringing the men, bringing the material to Britain, bringing the soldiers to Britain. And because of their sacrifice, the Allies win the war. <laughs>